Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another quick vlog, and this one is on the subject of what's going to be coming in terms of WCFA's content this week. So I came up with a tentative schedule, and the reason that I've done this is because some people do want to see the game played with a WTFS video before they consider buying it. So it makes sense for me to put out a schedule and say, hey, on this day, I'm going to be looking at this game, so if you want to hold off on it till then, then by all means. So, we'll see how this one turns out. I've got to stress one thing first. It might not end up coming out at this time. Yeah, this is a tentative schedule. I'm trying to stick to it as best I can, but you never know what might happen. For instance, particularly lately, I've had three separate games that were supposed to get WTF is end up doing horrible things to my computer. For instance, we had Yars Revenge that didn't work at all, so I had to get rid of that. It refused to change resolution. I wasn't going to record it at 1024 x 768 because that would look awful, so I cancelled that. Fortix 2 managed to break my sound card by force changing the bitrate on it, so I can't do that one either. And last but by no means least, I had Atom Zombie Smasher by Blendo Games, which is actually very, very good. It keeps stopping the fraps recording at random for no apparent reason, and I don't no, why? I have no idea why that would be the case. None whatsoever. But whatever the case, that means those three games cannot have a WTFS video. And if any of these games run into similar problems, then that won't come out. I will try to bring them out on the days that I say, but as I said before, things can happen, so I can't possibly promise that. But that will be the intended schedule, and that's what I'll be shooting for. So today, which is Monday, I will be releasing a video on the subject of Tiny Bang Story. What is Tiny Bang Story, you might ask? Tiny Bang Story is a puzzle game. It's a mixture of different puzzles, and it's just got a really promising preview from Rock, Paper, Shotgun. So I want to have a look at that. It's by Calibri Games, and while it is supposed to be a sort of casual game, I've been told it's actually got quite a lot of great depth and an amazing art style. So I'm going to be having a look at that one. Now on Tuesday, I'll be taking a look at the game Space Pirates and Zombies by MinMax Games, and this is a title that I've done a preview on. I actually got a world exclusive on this particular game. I got a alpha build for Cynical Brit, and I'll be having a look at the complete product. And also, I should point out that I am voice acting in this game. I am the narrator. Now, needless to say, some people might say that I'm biased as a result of that, so I would recommend that you go and watch the alpha footage that I put out. Let's have a look at my channel for World Exclusive Space Pirates and Zombies Parts 1 and 2. And this was well before I agreed to actually do any voice acting for them, so there you go, no bias on my part. And uh, Space Pirates and Zombies is a star control style, freeform-ish, top-down space game whereby you build and pilot a fleet of ships and you are a ragtag bunch of space pirates. You take missions, you interact with factions, and there's also a dynamic zombie menace that can infect different areas of the universe. It's kind of neat, and I would recommend having a look at it, and I'll give you a more complete look on Tuesday at the complete product as opposed to the alpha product and show you some of the stuff beyond what I showed you in the alpha preview, which was the very start of the game. On Wednesday, I will be having a look at Garsharp, the Monster Slayer. This game is being developed and published by a company called Dead Mage, and it's an indie hack and slash spectacle fighter. It's a God of War style game. I am very interested to see if they can actually pull this one off. The trailer looks really, really promising, but it's going to come down to how good the combat system is, if I'm totally honest. It doesn't seem to have any other features apart from that, but it does say platforming elements, which is kind of disappointing. Hopefully there's not too much of that. I prefer more Ninja Blade as opposed to God of War. I know I'm a heathen. I prefer just pure action combat like Bayonetta and Ninja Blade to games like God of War and Dante's Inferno, which have platforming elements and puzzles that really don't suit the actual genre. On Thursday, I'll be taking a look at a 3D action-adventure game by the name of Hydrophobia Prophecy, which is released and published by Dark Energy Digital. And this game supposedly sports hydrokinetic powers, the ability to throw water at people and solve puzzles. There's also gunplay and things like that. It actually looks pretty solid, so I'm looking forward to giving it a try, and hopefully it will be a good title. It does kind of look like a third-person version of Bioshock, however, without all of the Art Deco stuff going on. We'll see whether or not it actually ends up being any good. Friday will be graced with another offering from Mark Wang. Yes, and it's called Revenge of the Bitch. I kid ye not. Taking one look at his website indicates that this game might not be entirely serious. And I'm looking forward to giving it a try. It's a single player RPG for the PC with a completely bizarre sense of humor. This game's been out for a few months, but I feel it perhaps needs a little bit more attention. 
Or maybe not. We'll find out. I like the idea of it. It looks a little ridiculous, to say the least. And the fact that he also brings live action into his trailers is worth a laugh in and of itself. Saturday, we'll be having a look at a game by the name of Detour. This is a title by Sandswept, and it's supposedly an exciting construction-based war game in which players pit their minds and their might against one another in order to safely guide a hapless delivery truck across a deadly battlefield. And it does have four-player co-op and competitive, as well as 27 single-player challenges and all manner of other things. I really don't know quite what's going on in this game. It looks like a tower defense crossed with an escort mission crossed with some kind of RTS title. It's a little bit weird, and I'll be looking forward to having a look at that one. And on Sunday, the grand finale for this particular set of WTF's videos will be Brink. That is the forthcoming shooter from Splash Damage and Bethesda, and it features lots of customization as well as single-player, multiplayer crossover, and objective-based gameplay, which is dynamically generated within the game. So it looks to me like a massively upgraded version of Enemy Territory Quake Wars, and also it features a a very unique movement system whereby you can basically do parkour across the level but you are of course fighting in first person so that should give me a couple of days at least to look at that and get some of the unlocks before I go into it that's not the kind of game I want to give you a complete first impressions of since it does require you to unlock certain items and things like that plus I quite like to spend some time customizing my character and I know for a fact if I did a video of that I'll be on for about three sodding hours I wonder if there's a top hat Whatever the case, folks, that covers what I'm going to be showing you this week. Once again, it is tentative. There may be changes and things like that. And we'll see how it ends up turning out. Hopefully, I can stick to that schedule. One other thing I would like to make people aware of is that I'm going to be doing some tests as regards to metrics and the benefits of front-paging content. Now, those of you who are not aware of how a professional YouTube channel works, a lot of making a channel successful comes down to marketing. There's a lot of people that make great content and it just doesn't get watched. There are some people that make terrible content and it gets watched. That's just the way of it. And it comes down to how you market your channel. In this case, what I want to do is to ensure that we're getting the maximum number of new subscribers every time someone visits this channel by making sure that the video on the front page is something that appeals to a lot of people. Now, right now, my most viewed content is WTF is. It's my most popular series, and it's getting about as many hits as Azeroth Daily, but I am noticing that when I put WTF is content on the front page, I get a bigger increase of hits than I would from Azeroth Daily. And why would that be? Well, the simple answer is the people that subscribe already watch it, and they don't need to go to the front page. That and the fact that if somebody comes, doesn't play WoW, sees that WoW video, and then decides that the channel is not worth subscribing to, then we lose a potential viewer. So... Any of you that do watch the Azeroth Daily content by looking at the front page every day, you don't need to do that. You can check your subscription box. You can also click the latest WoW content button, which is to the right-hand side of the front page video. You can look on Facebook, on the Bulletin system, on Twitter, on cynicalbrit.com. It's available all sorts of places, so it should be really, really easy for you to keep an eye on. There's also a shows page for Azeroth Daily, which lists all the episodes in a chronological order. Aside from that, I think that's about it, folks. Aside from thank you for 100 million views. That's what we actually managed to hit today. That's a ridiculous number of views. I never thought we'd actually get that many. But hey, there you go. We've made it all the way to 100 million. So he is hoping for 200 as the next milestone. My name is Total Biscuit, and I will see you next time.